Hey, I'm Shari Fox. In this video, we're going to be talking about layers, whether you're a beginner or just somebody who wants to gain a better understanding of how they work. Uh, we're going to be going over everything that I know that I can possibly share with you about how layers work. I'll be teaching you how layers work in Clip Studio Paint. That's the program I use, uh, but layers work pretty much the same in almost every program. So a lot of these basics and things will be the same. So you don't need to worry about, you know, a difference of program. I'm a full-time freelance artist, meaning I make my living selling my art. I'm also self-taught, so anybody can learn and develop their skills. With that said, uh, go ahead and subscribe so you can see more videos like this one. Also, likes and comments are super appreciated as well. So let's get into layers. So you might be thinking something like, what are layers? How do they work? What are they for? I don't really understand. It just doesn't really make sense. Uh, that is okay. Lots of you guys feel that way to begin with. Layers create an opportunity to differentiate sections of your work, draw in one area without disturbing another. For example, if you look at this artwork I have here, the background for looking at our layers. I've got my section of layers over here. Uh, the background is right here. And then we've got our character over top. So I want these two things separate, background and our character. And I've even got the highlights, which I'll come back to. Order of layers matters as well. So if this background layer was dragged in up above our character, you can see that now like a piece of paper, the background paper is on top and the character is underneath. We don't want that. We want it the other way. So I'm going to pull this back to here. So essentially layers tell your program which things are on top and which things are underneath. Layers is really about the convenience of drawing things separately from other parts. It is about organization. So in a realistic artwork like this, normally as I'm painting, I'd have a lot more layers than this. I've just really simplified it so that you can, you know, not be overwhelmed by what you're looking at, but see that we've got background and character. Normally what I would do in a semi-realistic portrait like this is I'd actually have a separate layer for like the skin on the face, like the face itself, a separate layer for the neck and like the shoulder and a separate layer for the hair all together, that's on another layer. And then of course our background would be separate, which it is. And then as I'm painting, I'll add things to it and I may merge them together. And to merge just means you collapse them together. So I could merge this one down. We have a merge button here, combine to layer below. So if I was satisfied with the highlights of that, I could merge it together and be like, yep, that's what I want to do for simplification or you don't have to, but I merged a lot of things together for the simplicity of showing you. So the process for an artwork like this might look something like start with a sketch and then after the sketch is done, I would color underneath the sketch and ultimately get rid of the sketch even, maybe blend it into the painting and do the background separately. And as I'm going, I'm adding on to what I have and new sections get new layers because I want to keep them apart. And there's a number of different reasons you might want to keep them apart. One of them being is that layers are about experimentation. So if you try something and you're like, do I like the way this looks? Turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on. Yes, no, yes, no. You can decide. Many times I'll delete it and be like, nope, didn't like it. And sometimes it'll be like, yep, I like it. So it gives you a way to compare and it gives you that opportunity to see it with and without. Now here's another artwork of mine, a different, totally different style. We're looking at chibi. It's got line work. It's got line art. Um, and line art is a big reason why you would want some separation. So I've gone ahead and done some color coding and folders and names that I'll explain in a little bit about, you know, best ways to understand layers and organizing. But for now, um, I have a folder of all the lines. It looks a little creepy when I turn it off, but maybe if I turn off the color, 
turn off the background, you can kind of see that the lines get their own section. That makes it easy so that when I want to color, I'm coloring underneath the line work. You wouldn't want your colors to be over top of your lines because it just looks a little messed up. So your line work is always on top of your colors. Now, if you're still feeling a little confused and overwhelmed by what you're seeing, what I'm showing you, don't worry, just hang in there. I'm gonna explain everything that I can about layers that should hopefully fill in the gaps of what is confusing you. So some basics to know about layers is that they show up in the layers window. So I just pulled this out. If you're not seeing your layers window, you just need to go to window this is in Clip Studio, but a lot of programs will have like the same sort of thing. And the windows shown are the ones checked. We look for layer. If it's unchecked, it's it's out of sight. If we check it, we can see it. In Clip Studio, you can drag your layers bar around. Normally when I'm painting, it's actually over here. That's just how I normally arrange it. So we could even we could even leave it over there, but part of my camera blocks it. So I'm just gonna maybe pull it back over here and we have to drag this down so that we can see it. And when you go about creating a new canvas, we're gonna go file new, create something. Um, you'll, you'll get one layer to begin with. A lot of programs will start you with a paper layer. My recommendation is don't even use a paper layer. I'd probably just delete it and create a new layer. In this case, we have to create a new layer before we can delete it because the program won't let you have no layers. So we have to have at least one. So delete the original layer. This says layer two now. And don't draw on the paper layer because the paper layer actually has opacity to it. It's like a white layer that if you draw on it, you're mixing your current layer that maybe is your background with the white. It's better to work on transparency, which means there's no pixels colored in. So we don't want any pixels colored in. We want a blank canvas, so delete. To actually add more layers, there is a button here that says new raster layer. Uh, and in most programs, it literally looks like a piece of paper. So you can add as many of those as you want. And there are two kinds of layers. Uh, the other kind is a vector layer. So this one, it looks like a piece of paper, but it has a little cube in it, which implies object tool. So we won't get super into that right now, but it's a special kind of layer. We'll come back to that. So also note that you can create vector layers or line work layers. Not every program has vector layers. This one does. I do use vector layers in pretty much every artwork that I do. So it is important and we will talk about that. You can drag layers around by clicking on them and pulling them down wherever you need to move them. On my iPad, because I have uh, an iPad as well, you actually have to click where the three lines are. They're located approximately here and you have to click there to drag. You can't just click anywhere, but same sort of idea, click and drag. Having too many layers at once can be really overwhelming and confusing. Oh no, where are we in this project? What layer was I on? So, you know, having a lot of layers can get really confusing. So ways to deal with that are similar to what you sort of see just glancing at this organization strategies. The first one I use is folders. So the folder button looks like a folder. Click that and you can drag layers into it. You're pretty much going to have to if you have multiple layers and you want to drag them in. Oh, I guess that doesn't really work. They're already in there. Uh, we can make another folder, but you can drag layers into the folder, hold shift and pull them in. So now we've got these grouped and these ones are outside of it. So you can see how the layers and folders kind of work together. You can even drag entire folders. Something else that's useful is you can name your folders and name your layers. So we could name this folder sketch. We can name this layer background if we wanted to. And I also like to color code them. I often will use similar colors for the same things like backgrounds. I often will use like green or blue or something. So green, make green background. Maybe my sketch is going to be red and maybe that maybe this layer or section of layers, this folder, I should say, is for colors. So maybe I'm just going to do that. Basically what you see here, this project was organized by uh, background, color, line work. And then these were all inside of a folder called Tifa. This is an artwork of Tifa from, from Final Fantasy VII. And then the Moogle got its own uh, 
folder of layers here. And then the foreground are these little dot thingies, special effects, I guess, that got its layer at the top. Foreground meaning in front, the foremost layers, AKA needing to go at the top. So it's at the highest. If I pull our foreground layer below our uh, background, you'd see it disappear. We'd have to turn off background to even see those dots. So order really matters. You can always think of it as what's at the top is in the front. Think of foreground, backgrounds should probably be at the back, at the bottom. A small note as well, the delete button is right here. So if you wanna delete a layer, it's the little trash can. And you might've noticed me turning layers on and off. The little eyeball means that the layer is visible. If you turn it off, the layers become invisible. In this case, this is an entire folder. So you can turn off entire groups of layers and folders, or you can just turn off uh, sections if you want, just on individual layers, you can see me turning them off. <laughs> so there's lots of layers in this project. I find this is just side note. I have a lot more layers when I'm doing work with uh, like cartoony and um, line artwork versus my realistic stuff. And part of the reason is I actually merge a lot more when I'm doing realistic stuff as I go. Whereas in this case, I don't know, I just keep it all separate. There's really no right or wrong way to go about how many layers. There's no right or wrong way. Um, I get that question a lot. How many layers should I have? And it's like, it really doesn't matter as long as you can sort of be organized enough that you're not like completely lost in your artwork. But for some projects and some artists, you might need lots of layers to do what you're trying to do. And then there's other projects where maybe you're only working on like five layers total for the whole thing. And, or you're just like merging as you go. So there's no right or wrong. It's just process of what feels right. And for me, again, it varies so much depending on on the type of project I'm doing and just maybe how I'm feeling that day. Sometimes it's like I need more layers if I'm feeling less confident. It's like I don't want to merge yet because I'm not sure that I like it yet. It's kind of like we were talking about with this one. If I'm confident, maybe I'll merge it. If I'm not, maybe I'll leave it separate. So we really want to make the most of the tools that come with our digital art program. If we're sectioning things like the background is its own section and our character is its own section and we want to draw more on our character, not the background, this is a really important tool to do with layers is the clipping feature. This layer is actually clipped. That's what this little red line means, hence Clip Studio Paint. The clip button is this here. It looks like two squares kind of overlapping each other right here. So if I turn off the clipping layer that I have, this layer of highlights, I'll just move it around so you can get a sense of it, is no longer attached to the face layer. So the reason we use clipping layers is to save time um, and to only draw where the layer below it holds space and holds pixels and opacity. So to, it's better demonstrated than explained. Let's say I'm just gonna add some blue shadow. I don't know why. Um, I made a new layer here and I clipped it. So I'm gonna clip it on. That means if I were to add blue, it's only gonna add blue where her face and her hair is and everything. Instead, if I unclip this, well, now we just kind of got this blue mess over here. There's, there's layers in front, so those might confuse us. I'm just going to turn them off, okay? <laughs> okay. Those are some foreground things that I left there because it makes the art look good. But for teaching you guys right now, I'm literally just going to turn them off, simplify what we're staring at. So new layer, clip. Oh, I can add some blue just to here. I mean, I wouldn't actually do this. But if I did do this, I wanted to shade the side of her and I didn't understand the clipping or didn't use it, it would be really hard to draw just on her. What would I do? Like erase the background here? Not ideal. Not exactly going to be time efficient either. That looks terrible. So this is where the clipping tool is so, so handy. And we used it for our highlights. And again, if we unclip it, you can see how it 
interrupts our background space. It doesn't keep it separate. So a clipping tool is an amazing time saver. Highly recommend using it. Similarly to the clipping tool is our lock transparency. So I'm actually gonna merge for now our highlights into our um, character. So that's all on one. And if we click the lock transparency, this makes it so we can no longer add any pixels. So like, let's say I'm going to add more hair pieces. If it wasn't locked, I could go ahead and add hair. Look at that. But if it was locked, lock, it's this checker button with a lock. I cannot add any more pixels. I can only draw where I've already got pixels, which are, which is here. So that can be a time saver if you're working on one layer. The lock transparency tool does something very similar to the clipping tool in both cases. They only allow you to draw in the designated areas that you've sort of already painted. So again, making use of these tools is really going to speed up your process. It's just about being a lot faster and more efficient. Now I'm going to briefly show you what vector layers do, but I have made another entire tutorial dedicated to line art and talking about vector tools. So I'm going to have that in the top right for you. So if you want to go and watch that, you certainly can. But to understand what it does, let's add a vector layer right now. And, um, Let's just assume we had a sketch underneath. All right, sketch. Just going to make a really basic drawing. Okay. Nice. There's our sketch. So a line work layer or a vector layer, which is our cube layer, um, lets you, this is for making like clean line art and stuff. Go over top. Ooh, nice. And ooh, nice. It lets you do things like move your lines around. So if you're like me and sometimes you just can't get it in the right spot, it's really nice to be able to pick your lines up and move them using object transformation tools. So go ahead and look for the little cube um, option, cube object tool. You can also do things like adjust the width of your line. Ooh, yes. So vector, gives you a lot of options to tweak after the fact your lines, which in many cases proves so useful because you might've drawn something and you're like, oh, I really wish I made all the lines just a little bit thicker. You can easily do that. But again, that other tutorial is gonna have a lot more information about it. I just thought it's worth mentioning since we're talking about layers and vector layers is another thing that I use all the time and is worth knowing about. So being able to make those kinds of adjustments is very useful. Other tools to know about with layers are making use of layer modes. So what that is, is this drop down menu here gives you lots of options for when you're creating a new layer. Uh, let's say we're going to clip a layer to our girl here and not the background. I'm going to take just a light yellow, let's say, and I want to do something like glow dodge. Okay. Actually not glow dodge, add glow. Ooh, now we're glowing. So some of these options, uh, these modes, we'll call them, um, give you different effects. So if I turn off mode, if I turn off the mode and go back to normal, it looks like this in add glow. It looks like that. Uh, ones that I mainly end up using are color. Color just will change the color. So, oh, now she's got yellow hair. That looks terrible. <laughs> but if I turn it to normal, you can see I'm literally just coloring with yellow. But, let me color over her face. But with the color mode, it literally changes it to all the um, actual hue of your pixels to yellow instead of just painting pure yellow over top. So some of these modes are super, super useful. I like to multiply. Sometimes I use multiply as part of my shading process. Multiply is useful. Uh, other ones that I might use, sometimes use overlay. Screen can be useful. 
but I would just recommend experimenting and seeing what they do. I'm not gonna go over each one. Some are kind of straightforward and once you try it, you're gonna be like, oh, I get it, I see what it does. So you can definitely test these out yourself. Another one worth noting is the opacity slider on a layer. So let's say I do add a bunch of blue shadow and oh, I'm even gonna multiply it. Did you see the difference? Normal, multiply, subtle, but in this case we can tell the difference. But let's say I'm like, mm, I kind of like the idea, but it's too strong. We have the opacity slider. See the slider here where I can turn it down. Maybe it's like, ah, yes, I just want the slightest touch of it there. I want shadow on that far side. And so maybe that's what you do. So having this opacity slider lets you turn up and down the degree of which uh, that layer is showing the layers underneath. To better explain here, if we take our layer with our actual elf girl on it, we turn down the opacity, she's gonna disappear. So again, it's to what percentage, because it's out of 100, what percent of her is showing through the layer um, over top of the layer underneath. So the background shows through if we turn the layer over top down. If we turn the layer, the background layer down, the opa we can see it going down there and we don't see a difference where the actual girl is because she's not affected and she's on top of the background. Other tools worth noting relating to layers is this lock button. Let's say you're like, the background is perfect. I don't want to mess it up. You can hit the lock button and it'll show a little lock here so that you can't touch it. You can see a little no, no sign where my cursor is saying no. You can't edit. If I turn it off, ooh, I can edit. But if I lock it, it'll stop you from actually painting on it and making changes to the layer itself. It's also important to note that there is a layer dropdown menu so that there are things that you can do within it. Uh, things like if you can't find the layer options, there's things like new raster layer, which is literally the same as a regular layer. So new layer. Uh, correction layers. These are useful actually. For example, brightness. All right, we wanna brighten this right up. So correction layers can be useful. It actually creates a whole new layer um, that you can turn it on and off. Like, do I like it? Oh, I kind of like it, but I'm gonna turn down the opacity. These are things that go through my mind as I'm drawing. So we have correction layers. You can experiment with different ones in here. Things related to brightness, contrast, hue, saturation. Those are gonna be commonly useful. Uh, new folder, whatever, duplicate layer. If you don't want to do some kind of copy paste keybind, you can duplicate a layer, make a copy of it. And then some of this other stuff I wouldn't worry too much about. Sometimes I like to merge visible layers, merge everything together. That option is here. And similarly to flatten image, just makes it all flat, all on one. Same as kind of merge all. I'm really hoping that the things I went over in this video are going to help you better understand how layers work. One thing I can say is don't really overthink it. Just think of it like layers of pieces of paper and you can do things to them and uh, the ones on the bottom are hidden below things that cover it on top. It's more or less that simple and the way you make use of layers has everything to do with keeping organized, speeding up your process, and that kind of thing. So hopefully this helps. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. You can also visit me live on stream at twitch.tv slash shyfox if you want to direct, directly ask me questions there. And if you liked this video, be sure to subscribe so you can see more of them. Give it a like. That really helps us out, helps us make more free art tutorials like this one. So if you'd like to see more, that would be awesome. I've also got other social medias you can check out like Instagram, Twitter, and we've got a Discord community that you can join if you like. Those links will all be in the description below. And with that, we're going to end the video. So take care, happy painting, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.